Welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2023 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strike, the Founder and Festival Director, in conversation with the filmmakers and the person whose story is told in the film Halls of Power, which is part of the 2023 Film Festival lineup. We're so happy to be in conversation with Janae Joseph and Graciela Quesada, who made the film and especially honored to be able to have in this conversation, Elijah Manley, whose story you will follow in this, uh, in this very important film. So thank you all and welcome. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you all with us. And uh, let's start with uh, Janae and Graciel. Tell us about the film and then Elijah, tell us what it was like to have a film made about you. All right, I guess I'll go first. Um, my name is Janae Joseph. Um, I'm one of the co-directors and co-producers for The Halls of Power. And this film, it kind of started off as a class project for a documentary filmmaking class. Um, I had been following Elijah's work within the community for about a year beforehand. And I thought, hey, it would be a great idea for us to kind of just come together and do a film about his life and his work and how someone our age can kind of just make a difference within his community, especially since he's been such a huge influential community member for so long um, and all the work that he did. So um, Graciel and Bianca and I, we got together and we decided to create this film. And it started off as a 10 minute project and it kind of expanded into a 40 minute project. <laughs> um, but um, I'm so proud of the work that we've done for this film and um, honored to be able to tell Elijah's story and how he ran for office and um, a lot of his organizing work that he did within South Florida and in Fort Lauderdale. And um, we hope that when you guys check out the film that you'll be able to be inspired by his story and his work. And Graciel, um, could you tell us a little bit about your involvement with the, with the film and tell us a little bit about the film? Oh, absolutely. So once again, I'm Gracia Quesada, and I'm also one of the directors and co-producers for The House of Power. And as Janae was mentioning, we did meet um, during a documentary filmmaking class in the fall of 2021. And um, after that class was done, um, we decided to continue working on the project because um, mainly because it was such a, an inspiring and compelling story. And we just wanted to continue to to showcase the life of Elijah and his work as him being one of the youngest persons to ever run for Florida legisla legislature. So that was something that really interests us and, and we just felt the, the need to tell his story and to continue working on the project, which for the most part, we worked on it for most of, I would say, 2022. <laughs> so it took us uh, some months to work on the project, but we're definitely, um, excited and proud of how everything turned out and, and we just had a blast producing the documentary. Oh, thank you. And Elijah, uh, as Nina asked, what was it like well, you know, when these filmmakers approached you and you know, what was it like to have them follow you around? Yeah, uh, at first I was uh, pretty intrigued by it. I remember getting the email. I want to say it was from you, Janae. <laughs> and I was like, what is this email? coming and they wanted to first you know it was for a school project they wanted to sit down with me and it was an initial interview at NSU and then it like Janae said it turned into a pretty much a years-long project <laughs> um, to me it was very empowering it allowed me to really tell my story I never really had anybody you know ask about my story and learn about my story um, you know, on, you know, in the form of a documentary, usually it's just me telling my story, writing about it on social media, but having the ability to really put in words with, you know, in a way, uh, I think this film does and encapsulates my entire story, the visuals, um, you know, the behind the scenes, the campaign events, all of that allowed me, uh, to really tell the narrative of my story and my life, how I grew up, the struggles I faced and kind of connect it to the political environment of, of Florida, what we're seeing happening in Florida right now. And so it was interesting, you know, to have the camera following me from a private, 
event to my campaign launch party to election night party and then you know every time i watch the house of power film even though i'm the subject of it just watching it it, it just you know you get to see the timeline of not just growth but i also got to see the timeline of just how everything you know how i grew as a person throughout the year and just how that journey uh how that journey unfolded and, and just seeing that on the screen and, and seeing not just my story and, and people listening to it and, and and maybe resonating with it but also just seeing just the the various different emotions I was feeling throughout that process. It allowed me to just capture my voice, my true voice, my authentic voice. And I was able to, to really showcase my authentic voice throughout that whole process. Well, it does seem as though there was a tremendous amount of respect and trust that was uh, uh, exhibited between you and the filmmakers for you know, having watched the film. Um, it does feel as if, uh, you know, it um, it was very authentic to watch you go through this process. I'll add to that. I actually didn't even get to see the film until it was out. So there was no pre no previous uh, view of the film. I, I saw it on the screen when everyone else got to see it. So I was a little nervous at first, um, at the first screen at screening. I was not sure what I was about to see. I'm like, they're saying this. I don't know what they put on the screen. I, I never really had the opportunity to just really see what was, uh, you know, what the whole editing process and how they put the story together until I saw it on the screen myself. And uh, I was really happy with what I saw. Oh, very good. Very good. And Janae, um, this is the second film that you've had with our festival. Your first film looked at um, a kind of recovery of a story from history. And this film, in many ways, feels as if you're you're catching the first addition of history in terms of uh, Elijah's uh, uh, run and, and what I'm, I'm sure will be, a, you know, uh, uh, an incredible long future in public service. So Janae, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, the themes and what attracted you to this particular project? Absolutely. Um, within my undergraduate studies in history, um, I kind of just learned to observe, like, our stories and the stories that we tell as like living, breathing things. For example, the story of Eula Johnson, a civil rights activist and her work during the wait-ins for my first film, I was able to see a lot of parallels and draw comparisons through her work back in the 1960s and kind of just connect it as a through line to today and what we're going through right now. Um, for Elijah's work and also the work of other um, representatives and other organizers that we spotlight within the film. These are the stories that we're going to be telling like our friends or children, maybe their children's children, kind of just further down the line. And being alive to be able to document all the things that are happening and kind of just preserve them in a way where it preserves like, you know, our stories for future generations to kind of just look back and evaluate what we've been going through in this moment. And Another thing that I would like to add to that is um, during the process of us editing this film, we had, the I'd, I'd like to say that the editing process take, took, I'd say about as long as filming the film, if that made sense, because there was a lot of reevaluating all of the footage and a lot of things that were kind of just left on the cutting room floor, but the whole purpose is to kind of just make sure that everything was intentional. You know, what are the things that we're going to be looking back on, like, about a decade from now? What are the things that would be taught within, like, a class about either running for office or being a young person like Elijah, you know, in the state of Florida right now, experiencing the moment that we're in? So kind of just taking all of that into account and putting it into a coherent story to be able to share with other people in the theatrical experience I feel like is it's really amazing kind of just the work that we are able to do for this film and I hope to continue to do work like this in the future well and it must have been a very different um uh I just wanted to, to stay with you for a moment Janae because the first film that you made was largely from uh, limited uh, reportage on, you know, uh, written materials that you could find and some interviews from people who um, knew the story, but um, it must have been a very different experience 
seeing all of these things secondhand as opposed to being in this film, being able to experience them firsthand. Yeah, absolutely. And especially with Elijah and the work that they've done over the years, it's really interesting because not only has their work been documented by other people, but um, of course, with the age of social media, his digital footprint is just astounding. And um, <laughs> we kind of went through a lot of it during the researching stage of this film. And another interesting thing about coming back to the digital footprint is that we would kind of just see him in the background of some photos at some organizing events and be like, oh, there's Elijah right there. Or there would be photos that he would post about his work that we would kind of just make sure to include within the film. And we only interviewed him twice throughout the entire course of the film. And aside from the parts where we would go to an event and kind of just film him doing his thing, like working on his campaign and whatnot. We only had the information from the interviews that we did with him during that time to kind of just go back and do some more research, corroborate more information, talk with his peers, try to reach out to some of his mentors and really piece together this story in a way where um, it feels more complete, that it's not just from his perspective, but it's from the perspective of other members within his community as well. Ah, yes. And, and Graciel, can you speak a bit uh, to your experience? What drew you to this particular project to work on it for so long? Oh, definitely. So for me, it just it was just so interesting seeing how someone that young has such an interest and such a passion to make a difference in the community and to get involved. Because that, in a sense, is somewhat atypical. You don't necessarily always see some a young adult wanting to be involved in politics. Sometimes they're just uninterested in that. And just seeing um, Elijah and his just desire to, even from such an early age, that was something that kind of interests me and drew me um, initially to be a part of the project. And Elijah, you know, just to circle back again to, to being approached to be a part of a project. And as you mentioned, you hadn't seen the, the finished project until it was done. So you had to have a leap of faith. Was there a thought in your process, um, just uh, tagging off of something that Graciel had mentioned, um, how important it may be for young people who, um, who maybe uh, aren't politically involved uh, to see your role and and see you as an inspiration and see you as a model. Yeah, uh, that was uh, every time we had an interview or the camera was around uh, at campaign events. I always made sure to make sure I had a message that was inspir that was inspirational to other young people because while while this is like my story, uh, it's meant to be uh, an inspiration to other young people. It's not meant to be about me. It's about to be about a, a larger issue. Um, a larger purpose, and that is young people getting involved in politics because of the political environment we're in right now, and then tying you know, my personal experience into that as well. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that other young folks you know, who in the future may decide to pursue a career in politics or public service, or even if it's not elected office, some form of public service uh, or giving back to the community, uh, that they're able to see a blueprint uh, of how to do that, uh, see the mistakes I've made. And uh, in the film, there's ways for you to see things I might have not done the best at, uh, but also see some of the things I, I did and how, you know, different paths I've taken and to get to a certain point. And just giving them that blueprint, that, that ability to look and say, okay, this is this has happened before and having that documented is so important because, you know, I wasn't really able to go back in, you know, before I ran for office and, and, and see, you know, how, young people in the past have done this um, and, and how they dealt with some of the issues uh, that I've had to deal with on the campaign trail. And so just having that and then having it be authentic and raw as well. There's a lot of raw footage. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's a well put together film, but it wasn't meant to be something where you just capture all of the perfect and you capture all of the, the good. It was meant to really follow the journey and just kind of see what some of the challenges were at the time. And, and, and I think that really spoke to me in the process as well, being able to just let that let that be shown authentically and not getting to see it until really the end was was also, that was, like you said, it was a leap of faith too, because I wasn't sure what was going to be on the screen. Um, but just knowing that the message in the end was inspirational to other people. And I think that was one of the silver linings I took. 
Oh, wonderful. And and staying with you, Elijah, um, one of the the central mission of our festival is is to inspire people, to give people frameworks and models to take into their own lives, to make their communities uh, a better place. And um, and certainly, although I'm not sure people always think of it this way, but democracy and public service is um, uh, an approach to dealing with all of the issues and conflicts that would come up in any society in a peaceful, respectful manner. And, um, and so, you know, my hat is off to you for, for taking that on and, and you know, for, um, for stepping up to public service. And, you know, uh, so I just would, you know, first want to, you know, uh, thank you for, for that, because I, I, I don't think we thank people who, who do take on this awesome responsibility enough. So there is that. And also, what would you expect, um, what would you hope that people would take away from, from seeing your experience and your journey to make their lives a better place? Yeah, uh, I think one of the things I want specifically young people to take from the, the message um, that this film is showing, the narrative that this film is showing is that you don't have to have all the answers, you don't have to be perfect, and your story doesn't have to be the general mode of what, you know, a politician is or a public servant is. Um, from my, you know, my background, I don't have a law degree like a lot of politicians have. I didn't go to a, you know, a fancy school and have a large net worth. Uh, I'm just a kid from the hood, as I was saying many times in the film. And, and that's the truth. And I want other people to be able to look at that and know that, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from and what your background is, you know, you, I mean, you could succeed and excel in life, but not just that, uh, understanding that it's okay to, to be authentic and it's okay to grieve and it's also okay to not have all of the answers. And I, I think that that's something I want people to take from this film. And then just at that time being, you know, the only, uh, at, at that time, the, the first and only Gen Z to be running for the legislature, it, it was it was different because there, there really was no blueprint for me. And just so people being able to take a look at that, find a blueprint, but find what works for them. And the, and the thing I like about the film is, you know, although I have, you know, my political views and my personal views, I think it's a story that can be inspiring to people with different ideas and different views because it'll allow those folks, I mean, the same narratives, the same uh, uh, the same message can be applied to different situations and different ideologies and people who might believe different things. If they can find something inspiring in this film, I, I, I believe they will. Thank you so much. And Janae and Graciel, um, you know, what do you hope people will take away as you you know, as you have this film uh, get out into film festivals and into the community. Janae? I think definitely um, for people to really feel uplifted, really, in a sense, a call to action, a call to be involved, to take part in what's going on in the community and to be informed. Because if you're not informed, then, you know, you can't really make a change and to also not give up, not to be passive and, and to just press on and persevere. Those are some of the things that we would like for our viewers to take away from the film. That's great. Janae? Yeah, and to add on to that, um, just like what Steven says towards the end of the film, you know, the easiest way to start is to just talk to your neighbor. We show not only through like Elijah running for office, but um, just many of the different ways that you can get involved within your community, different ways where you can um, organize or kind of just talk to people. Um, money in politics is another huge aspect within the film that we talk about um, towards the third half. So there's just a lot of different facets to getting involved to make sure that the issues of your community are heard. And the starting point is to learn what those issues are. And that's by just talking to your neighbor. If I could also add uh, failure and how failure is not always a bad thing. And I think in this film, it captured that as well. I lost the campaign and I lost twice in this film, uh, but it really showed how I, I still continue to, you know, be ambitious and and, and keep on keeping on in, in, in some words. And so uh, I think, what I want young people to take from this message or anybody in that matter is that there might be setbacks and that there might be failures as I talk about in the film, but that's 
that's really a, a, a key driving point to building character um, and building. Um, and like I say all the time, the best winners are the best losers. <laughs> so I want people to know that those there might be setbacks and failures, but there's also ways to navigate through that as well. That is such an important point. So to wrap this up, I uh, want to first ask Janae and Graciel, um, what what do you want? Pe what can people watching this film uh, do? What can you? What would you suggest that they do to get involved? And then um, Elijah, what's next for you? Graciel, you want to start? Oh, or Janae? Okay. <laughs> um. The first thing is find out which local organizations or the types of people are doing the work within your community and partner with them and help them spread their message. For example, um, one of my friends, Alex, she owns a nonprofit that supplies period products and feminine products to women in need within the community. And a lot of our operations are kind of just based around where I live in Tamarack. And it was through the work of me going through this film and the research for this, where I was able to kind of just discover um, her organization and other organizations that are kind of just putting in the work to really be there to make sure that all the resources are being delivered to their communities. So kind of just branching out and starting to do that, I'd say that's a great first step. And another thing is know who your representative is, know their name, their contact information, and reach out to them. You know, talk about the needs that are going on within your community and see if there's ways that you can help or even work for their office if you would like to. Um, find out if there's any local elections that are happening within your community as well. Um, not all city elections are kind of within the same, like the usual cycle of, you know, every two years or every four years. So there might be an election that's happening around you, just staying informed, getting your neighbors involved, getting your family members involved as well. Graciel, do you have anything to add? Also, I would also say that just learning who your local representatives are, your local government, um, also researching different causes, different organizations, like your name was mentioning, getting involved and partnering with them. Um, there may be different events going on in the community. So it's just a matter of being informed um, at the end of the day as far as like what's going on um, around you and, and in your neighborhood and your community. And register to vote, of course. And Elijah, what's next for you? Still a lot to figure out in Florida right now, um, that's for sure. Uh, I, I want to help other young people who want to get involved in public service. I want to help them navigate through the difficult terrain of, of running for office and public service. Um, right now, you know, Gen Z is obviously underrepresented. When, and we don't have, we, I think we only have one Gen Z uh, legislator in Florida. Uh, in the Florida legislature and as a Republican. And so we need state legislatures in Florida and we obviously have a Maxwell Frost in Congress and, and, and that's great and we wanna expand that representation. And so what I'm, what I'm doing right now is trying to help young people who wanna take that first step, find out how to do it, show them the blueprint um, and help them become successful public servants, uh, whether that's in public, uh, public life or maybe it's working in government or maybe it's managing a campaign or volunteering for a campaign. Um, helping connect people to democracy, I, I think, and giving them uh, that voice because uh, a lot of people are just not connected to government, especially young people don't know how, either don't know how to do it or it's a process that's not meant for people like us to get involved. And so making sure people uh, find a way to make really the government theirs to get involved and use their voice and make it heard through the process. That's a, a long-term goal of mine. Oh, that's wonderful. Um... Thank you all. Uh, this has been a, a remarkable conversation. I think it's it's really going to resonate with people who watch it. Um, so thank you again to the filmmakers, Janae Joseph and Graciel Quesada. And thank you so much, Elijah Manley, uh, who's, uh, for your generosity uh, and allowing these filmmakers to follow your story and, um, and to share uh, the insights and the growth that you experience with people. I think it is going to touch people and, and make our communities uh, stronger and better. So thank you. 
And thank you all to watching this glow. And uh, please do go to our website, peacefilmfest.org, so that you can find out how to get tickets to see Halls of Power as part of our in-person screenings, which begin September 19th and run through September 23rd. And then you can also catch up with it in our virtual festival, which begins September 25th and runs through October the 1st. Please also, if you want to find out more, um, there are resources uh, for Halls of Power that you can find by following the link tree. That's linktr.ee slash hop22, linktree hop22. Follow that link and that will send you to further resources um, about this production and about how to get involved. Thank you and we'll see you at the next Glow.